Welcome back to Questing Beast, I'm Ben. Today we're taking a look at something that I am very excited to show off, and that is The Waking of Willoughby Hall. This is my first full-length D&D adventure that I created via Kickstarter some time ago, and it's finally available for purchase. You can get it in print from the Swordfish Islands web store, or in PDF from Itch or DriveThruRPG. Check the links down in the description below. So this cover art is done by Sam Mamelli, as well as all of the interior art. You can fold it open to see the full picture here, where we have a number of adventurers uh, looking through a window at a cloud giant staring back at them. We'll see how that factors together once we look inside. This is a 32-page adventure. It works for old school essentials or knave or really any old school D&D rule set. It's good for one shots. It's good for dropping into your campaign. When we open up the cover, the first thing we see are these two maps that are done in two page spreads. Now, I was trying to do something a little bit different with these maps. Uh, first of all, when you typically see D&D maps, what you often see is that you have rooms and the rooms have numbers and the numbers just correspond to numbered room descriptions further on in the adventure. The change that I made is I added a lot more information to these dungeon maps than you typically see. For example, number one, all of the room names are on the maps. You can immediately see what those rooms are for. Uh, secondly, all of the uh, rooms not only have uh, a number, but the number actually corresponds to the page in the book where it can be found. So these maps work as a table of contents as well. And on top of that, of course, I have lots of notes around the outside that give a brief summary of the contents of the room. So just by reading these two pages and looking over these brief descriptions, you get a very clear top-down view of what this adventure is about and what you're going to find in all of the rooms. This makes things much more coherent as you go later on and you start reading the actual room descriptions. A lot of the game can be run directly from these spreads. And we have a map of the roof as well, because yes, you can climb on the roof. You can take the chimneys down to particular rooms on the first or the second floor. You can climb these towers. There's a lot of verticality that's been built right into the adventure. Here's our title page, uh, writing layout and cartography done by me. We have the cover and illustrations by Sam Amelli and Jacob Hurst did some editing and provided lots of invaluable advice. We have a basic uh, overview of what's going on here. The setup is that you have a haunted manor and this haunted manor is under attack by a giant holding a blessed bell. He's enraged, he's smashing in the windows, he's hurling his bell at it over and over. The reason for this is that a group of adventurers, an NPC party, that's not necessarily your NPC party or your PCs, has stolen his uh, magic uh, goose that lays golden eggs. They've run off with it and they are hiding in this haunted manor trying to escape from him. But as he continues his uh, tantrum, trying to destroy the manor. He's waking up all of the horrible undead things that live inside. So as a result, you end up with three different factions all at war going on within this situation. And then your PCs, your party, enter this situation and have to deal with it. Uh, there's a lot of things to steal inside the manor, so that's plenty of motivation right there. Of course, there's a goose that lays golden eggs, which is a straight-up gold mine. So there's plenty of reasons for the players to get involved and try and get in, get the stuff they need, and get out. But all of the factions with their own unique desires are going to make that complicated. We have a system for how the manor slowly wakes up, mostly by the Blessed Bell hitting the manor over and over. And we have some hooks to start off um, getting you into the adventure. We have a bunch of different encounters. As the manor becomes more and more awake, we go from sleeping to restless to awake, and the encounters get more uh, insane, they get more dangerous as things slowly uh, build to a head. We start getting into the cast of characters that we're going to discover here. Bonebreaker Tom, a rampaging cloud giant. This thing is way higher level than the suggested level for this adventure. I suggest that most PCs are, are about level 3. That seems to work pretty well. But that doesn't mean that everything else is going to be level three. There's going to be things that are much more powerful than you that you're probably going to have to spend most of the adventure hiding or avoiding. You can actually take down the giant. There are possible ways that you can do that. There is some stuff in the adventure that might help you, but it's not necessary. And it provides a level of danger and fear that the players are going to have to deal with, which I really like. We have the Death Knight, one of the undead warriors that are going to be rising from their graves inside of the manor, Willoughby Hall and some skeletal servants that he can recruit to fight you. 
we have a number of characters that we can find there. Some of these are ghosts, some of these are constructs, some of these are characters trapped in the distant past that you might be able to bring into the present. We have Elias Fenwick, who is the previous owner of the manor from years back. Uh, we have several ghosts that you can encounter and talk to in one way or another. We have some an owlbear that's stuffed that can come to life. We have our NPC party right here that has stolen Mildred the Golden Goose. Each of them have their own wants and their own personalities. And then we start getting into the actual room descriptions. So what I've done here to make things as easy as possible to run is that every two page spread includes a map. This is basically a reproduction of the maps from earlier on. That's simplified, of course. The rooms that are actually you are, are going to be taking place in uh, for that two page spread. For example, we have the tomb room, weapons room and night garden. Those are in white right there. So you can immediately see where you are. All the other ones are in gray. And of course, all of the rooms have room numbers on them that correspond to the page where you can find them. So it works a little bit like a choose your own adventure, where if you go from the weapons room to the hunting room, you immediately know what page to turn to that make things much easier to run. The layout is all done in a control panel layout where the, I don't have rooms bleeding onto other pages. Everything is kept contained so that page flipping is reduced. I also have a lot of uh, um, typographical things that make things a bit easier to run. For example, I have a lot of bolding to point out major things to pay attention to. And I have a hierarchical, if that's the right word, uh, structure for our uh, indents here or for our bullet points. So things get more specific, they move further in. So things on the farthest to the left are the main things that you're gonna see right away. And then as you move further in, you're only gonna see those if you examine more and more closely, they're more and more hidden. This way, when you enter a room, you immediately know what things to describe, and then you can break it down as the players decide to investigate. We have lots of different mini games that you can play here. There's tons of weird items that you can collect and use in creative, uh, creative ways. There's NPCs to talk to. There's traps that, that can be set off or traps that you can rig yourself if you're smart. There's mysteries and a whole bunch of collectibles that you can go through and try and gather together that will have one effect or another. There's galleries to examine, museums to raid, several secret rooms that you can discover. You can investigate the magical library, and then eventually you get all the way to the roof where you can fight the giant from the roof or simply sneak around and try and go down a chimney to a room that was perhaps inaccessible. As the adventure builds to a head and the man becomes more and more awake, not only will the monsters become more dangerous and the encounters will be worse, but things like uh, the rooms will start catching on fire or walls will collapse and everything just goes to heck. So you're going to have to get out of here eventually before the whole place just burns down and collapses. So how is that going to actually work out? That's going to be completely different for every group because of the level of chaos and um, just craziness that goes on throughout this adventure. They're going to have to be able to manage that and figure out the most effective route. So there we go. The Waking of Willoughby Hall. I'm very excited to see it finally out in the world. Uh, head down to the description below if you want to check out where you can pick it up for yourself. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.